For those of you who are introverts, you're going to like this one. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bolin Huang, a media and culture undergraduate at Lancaster University in the UK. On my channel, I provide summaries of TED Talks as well as live home tips and approaches that you can take will lead to a life of contentment, fulfillment, and happiness. In today's video, we're going to look at a talk called The Power of Introverts by former lawyer, writer, lecturer, and introvert Susan Cain, who argues why introverts do not have to feel ashamed of who they are as she introduces their strengths which shouldn't be undermined but cherished. Lego. For many years, possibly like a lot of other introverts, King had been constantly denying her own tuitions by deliberately choosing to go to places or apply for jobs she didn't enjoy going to or doing. However, she says, doing this is not only a loss for both introverts themselves, but also the world, as it desperately need what introverts are the best at, leadership and creativity. To give us more insight, the writer briefly introduced us to what introversion and extroversion are, as well as the differences between the two. For the former, it does not by any means equate to shyness, a common misinterpretation. Shy indicates a fear of social judgment, whereas introversion means how sensitive an individual is to social and external stimulation, which introverts do not need so much of while they prefer much quieter, low-power places. For the latter, in contrast, extroverts crave a huge amount of social stimulation and feel the most alive and productive when they're surrounded by people. Hence, King argues, in order to allow individuals to maximize their performances, we ought to provide the right zones of stimulation that they need. Nonetheless, King maintains, this concept of enabling people to work in their own suitable circumstances is being challenged by today's schools and offices, who claim that the most ideal way to achieve productivity and creativity is via socialization. To be more specific, to accommodate the desire for a social friendly environment, students are sat in clusters of tables facing each other and are constantly engaged in group activities. And despite appearing to be a well-managed setup for extroverts, for those who prefer to work alone nevertheless, they could be easily seen as weirdos or outliers. Not to mention, in the workplace, introverted employees are constantly bombarded by noise and the looks of their co-workers, while they're being routinely passed over leadership roles, regardless that they actually carry out better business outcomes compared to their extroverted counterparts. Albeit, just as there is no such thing as a pure extrovert or introvert, the author of the book Quiet Power maintains that a yin and yang is needed between the two personalities, conducive to creativity and productivity. Furthermore, it is not to say that there is no importance in learning how to collaborate and trust one another notwithstanding as shown through seekers, inventors, and the most creative minds throughout history and across the globe. A state of solitude is essential when it comes to producing groundbreaking work. Why are we getting it so wrong, King asks. In other words, how come schools and workplaces are set up in such a way that's making introverts feel so uncomfortable? To address this, the 54-year-old lecturer suggests is due to our cultural history. That is, particularly in the US, following the 20th century in search of job opportunities, the population gradually moved from the tranquil countryside settings into bustling cities. Consequently, without a choice, workers then had to learn how to bond and communicate with people alongside them, therefore making qualities such as charisma and magnetism increasingly important. Lastly, King illustrated to the audience a few practical approaches that we can take to create a well-managed, inclusive working environment for employees of all types of personalities, especially for introverts. Firstly, the former lawyer yells, stop the madness for constant group work. It is crucial for offices and classrooms to be designed as places where ideas can be discussed and exchanged, 
but we also have to let staff and pupils who are in solitude, which is what drives creativity and deep thought. Secondly, spend time in nature to help us come up with our own thoughts, discoveries, and revelations. And finally, we should all know what's inside of our suitcase and why they are there, says Kane while opening up her suitcase on stage. Extroverts bring us through energy and joy, and introverts, it's fine if you're feeling uncomfortable sharing what's inside, but sometimes you have to show what's in it because they are what the world needs. In my opinion, without a doubt, this talk from Kang is incredibly inspiring and even encouraging, especially for introverts like me. However, more than echoing her words of saying how powerful introverts are, I would like to share with you guys two things I learned in this talk, which are the importance of quietness along with the concept of yin and yang. First and foremost, frankly speaking, particularly in today's restless world, quite a number of us tend to forget to be quiet or find ourselves to always be in a state of hurry rather than being quiet and calm most of the time. And that I believe is, needless to say, a huge loss for us, as it is merely through taking the time out of our busy daily routines to sit down and have some me time with ourselves that we can come up with thoughts and feelings about things. To be more specific, that is, whether it is taking long walks in the woods like Darwin or sipping on a cup of tea and casually reading a book at home, that we can take the attention that we normally put into the world around us back into ourselves. And what is worth noting about that and what King didn't mention in her talk is, those thoughts and ideas that we generate are not just random ones such as, oh, I feel so tired. Oh, what am I going to have for lunch today? Or, oh, let's check what this person posted on Instagram, etc. Rather than that, it is to essentially spend time alone with ourselves to think and reflect on what we have done, what we could have done differently, and what we can do in the future. Hence, it is by those constant reflections and contemplations of ourselves that we can gradually change, improve, and grow. On top of that, what I also want to briefly talk about is the notion of yin and yang, a Chinese dialectic philosophy which describes how binary opposites, be it positive and negative, active and passive, or masculinity and femininity, can contemplate and work with each other. Indeed, just like Kane says in her talk that a balance is needed between introversion and extroversion, looking from an even wider perspective, in my view, a balance is also required in every part of our life. Taking what I've just talked about as an example, it is undoubtedly crucial for us to spend time alone in solitude to reflect on our thoughts and notice areas that can be improved on. Nonetheless, what's equally important is to go out and talk to people so that we can not only satisfy our natural need for socialization, but to also meet people who hold different opinions from us to stimulate our thinking and broaden our horizons. Thus, in general, without balancing two contrary actions, forces, and emotions, we may end up holding biased, radical, and one-sided views of the world, along with having a narrow range of skills and capabilities. Therefore, in respect to yin and yang in all areas of life, it is by knowing how to flexibly and smoothly shift from one to the other, could we establish peace within ourselves, the people, and the world around us. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to comment below, share this video, turn on notifications, and subscribe to my channel. Have a peaceful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.